the breaking mechanics in detail. As uh, he laughs. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first off, this is just to reiterate, we are trying to take the foot, rather than the normal, like, straight ankle lock, where it's just kind of this, or the upgraded breaking mechanics that I tend to favor, which is uh, creating the inversion, we are trying to push our fo partner's foot away from their hip. So I'm not curling, I'm not going back like this. The I'll be very honest, it's going to take you a bit of time to develop this. The, uh, the feel necessary to get the right placement does take time. M my personal process with this was grabbing two or three training partners at a time so I could actually like rotate them every few minutes because your ankle does get sore and basically being like, nope, 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 and then yeah. So you will have to find a spot on your rib cage because like the, the simple way of me explaining this is to say, put the heel against your ribs. That's not detailed enough. Uh, I've got a lot of ribs. <laughs> Uh, most of us have a lot of ribs, uh, and I don't know which rib necessarily is the right one, you know, fourth, fifth, you're like, that's going to change based on anatomy. What we need to understand about this is we need to bring the foot up as high as possible, bring our partner's heel against our ribs in a way that prohibits the heel from slipping out. Yes, you can follow up with an Aoki lock from this, but the defense for that, it, people can rotate out, like we're creating more problems that we need to solve and then you have to be good at the Aoki lock, which you should get good at it. But we don't want that to occur. Uh, the way that we're positioning our attack, we want to get a finish right away. If you're familiar with ankle locks, you'll be familiar with just ca having like this overhook style grip to begin with. I don't want to say that won't work, but you're going to have a hard time if you look at the relative elevation of my forearm to like the line of my uh, collarbone, there's a fair bit of space. Like I can stick all of my fingers into my armpit above Stefan's shin. Once I start with that, trying to bring the foot up, you notice like I'm doing my best, I'm shrugging, I'm trying to raise your foot, but it hurt. It hurt, right. So if you start with that grip, and are not capable of making the following adjustment or just start with this adjustment, you're going to have a hard time. We want to bring this out and then bring the heel back in and you can feel already the difference in the position. My forearm must stay high. I'm trapping his heel, the side of his heel, against my rib, uh, kind of where your pec meets your rib cage. So like there's a slight angle, that's kind of the ideal spot and where that is on you may change based on how big your pecs are. Uh, and how well endowed you are if you're a female. Uh, so just be aware that this is going to take, this is the longest part of the process of learning this is like, where does this heel go? There we go. For me, like I feel like that's about right. And as soon as I start to generate the pressure outwards, I can see in my training partners right away like when I've got it. It really feels like the, the end of the ridge on the instep here yeah. is up against the, the bottom of the arm. The it bottom of like the arm. Trying to kick you here. And basically, exactly. A test that you can employ for this initial bite is uh, move your foot around. Yeah. And, and move, like put on the boot. Yeah. Oh. And just like move it around in any direction you want. You feel like it, with anything like this, mm -hmm. you can kind of do that. Move your foot around. <laughs> I don't want to. There you go. So it's, and that's the test. When you're developing this, there are a couple of uh, um, waypoints that will help you know that you're on the right track. And at no point while you're developing the braking mechanics on this and the position, just, I wouldn't even say braking mechanics, just the initial foot position, because you have to be able to get this foot position to break someone's ankle. If you don't get the foot position at the beginning, you will have to make adjustments to get it, which means that while you're in the development process, all you should be working on is getting the foot into the right position, and then from different places, being able to move it into that position while we move around. We tend to move around when we do jiu-jitsu. If you can't do that, there's absolutely no point in trying to squeeze harder. So whenever, I would say not just beginners, but people in general learn submissions, if they don't get a tap, they tend to apply more force absolutely under no circumstances until you can get this positioning almost right off the bat where as soon as I go that way, I can feel that I'm going to get something. You shouldn't uh, be applying any more pressure. Where the pressure comes from, and again, this is 
almost the opposite of everything you would do with an ankle lock. I don't want to go back and down, and I certainly don't want to go this way because that's bringing, when I say this way, I don't want to rotate, I've got Stefan's ankle on my right side, I don't want to rotate like back to my right, like I'm looking over my right shoulder. What I want to do once I get this position is use the sort of back corner of my lat and armpit to push his toes out. So I'm basically turning in the opposite direction that I normally would for an ankle lock. So high, uh, like wide elbow to begin with, bring the heel in, bring your forearm in, and now depending on the length of your arms and the length of your partner's legs, you may want to grab your biceps, you may want to grab your forearm. I believe Mateusz Szczecinski does it just like this. I have found, again, depending on your anatomy relative to the other person's anatomy, sometimes this is quite helpful. But while I'm doing all this, and this grip here on the shin is quite helpful when it comes to placing the heel. So making adjustments, this will definitely be helpful. However, while I'm doing this, if I drop my elbow, all of that goes away. So the other part of this, other than like the position of your partner's foot and where to put it on your rib cage, the other part that's going to be difficult is people almost always, and this is for any ankle lock, like people, I call it the mobile fulcrum problem. This is the fulcrum. It shouldn't be mobile. If I'm dropping my forearm and, and, and elbow by extension in any fashion while I do this, it's just not going to work. And this ankle lock is more susceptible to that fulcrum movement than the other ones because the, 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 the inversion ankle lock, the fulcrum can move a little bit and I'll be able to keep going because your heel is not going to come out. With this, if the forearm comes down a little bit, the heel will start to come out. And either you're able to catch the Aoki lock right away or your partner will escape. So we need to be really proficient at keeping this elevation of our elbow relative to our collarbone and that we're not trying to go back to get this finish. Start pulling your heel out. There you go. Yeah, that's going to be the problem you run into. So like... The details on this are significant and they're hard to visually perceive. Like I'm trying, I'm doing my best to describe the action and I've had a lot of experience trying to teach this to people. So I do have people that are getting it based on uh, these directions, but the main issue that I'm having uh, or that, I, well, that I'm having, not anymore, I don't have this issue, I've de developed the technique enough, but I'm having with students is as soon as they feel like they want to apply it, they start crunching down and that elbow drops and the heel comes out. So we need to pay special attention to starting with our elbow almost out like comically farther than you think it needs to be. And then as you slide your forearm back in, try to keep the elevation of the elbow, catch the shin, catch your wrist, keep your elbow up and then rotate. We'll talk about foot positioning in the next video in more detail, but as a, like, you can't go wrong with this. Butterfly hook on the instep, maintaining tension with your shin. This will help you, again, make the adjustments to the heel positioning. And then this foot goes on your partner's hip with, so my left foot goes on my partner's hip with my toes on my right foot gripping my shin. I want to create as much obstruction as possible for someone trying to strip the feet. Yeah. If I'm just kind of going like this, this foot can be stripped. This foot can also be stripped. So I want to get here and lock this in place. All right? I've, I've dropped my forearm a little bit just so that we can kind of you know hang out here for a second. But if I do fall back to my side, which I may have to, I want to stay on my elbow. Once I get here, I can't turn my shoulder nearly as well. So the E version becomes more difficult to achieve. So if I get the actual positioning and I get to here like this, I'm going to come to my elbow yeah. and there we go. Um, it's a motherfucker. Like when you get it, and this is like in the development process, like I said, I just grabbed training partners and without doing anything else was just like, yes, no. And like just asking them to give me feedback. Does it feel like your foot's about to explode? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't say no, like if it's close, say no. Only when you're like having to kind of like jump, do I want any like, yeah, that's it kind of feedback. It feels like it's going to explode. I mean, there's a lot of pain on the bottom of the Achilles, like a which is like a lot typical, but not really what we're talking about. Yeah. But the real damage is this foot ro rotating outwards like this, the opposite of the inversion. Yeah. This 
Oh, e version, yeah. This e version motion. Yeah. That is, it's a really strange feeling. Yeah. And, and some people, painful. just to be a little bit more specific, most people will feel this kind of across these ligaments, right? Like it feels like that's going to tear. Some people feel this in the side of their heel and it feels like the bone is just going to go. I don't have an explanation for that difference. I don't have the, I'm not medically qualified. Um, but as long as your partner is not giving you feedback, uh, or if they are giving you feedback, as long as it's not the pressure from squeezing the Achilles tendon, in particular with beginners to leg locks, people tap a lot to Achilles tendon pressure. That's not really a thing when it comes to like breaking stuff. Uh, so we're not too concerned how tightly we can squeeze somebody's Achilles tendon. That's a little bit irrelevant. Your partner has to give you feedback about pain at the heel bone or across these ligaments. Uh, where it just feels like things are going to start popping and exploding. Uh, and again, the, the feedback should be evident, even if they're not saying anything. You're going to see people like jumping, trying to move their foot, grimacing, that kind of thing. If you're not getting that, go back to the drawing board. And I'm, I've literally spent half an hour just sitting there doing this to the point where I've had like rashes on the inside of my rib cage. And I now have like, a callus. Well, I have a bruise on my rib, so it's really easy to know when I've got this because as soon as I got like, oh, there's that sore spot. So I know when I've got someone's heel in the right position. Eventually, you will have the same bruise and your life will be that much better for it. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to organize our feet in this technique. Uh, and not just our feet, but our hips because where we position our feet is going to help determine where our hips go and it's going to help determine the distance between our hips and our partner's hips. So when we're applying a shotgun ankle lock, the distance from our partner's hips is dramatically different and a, lo a lot farther away than with a conventional uh, like inversion style ankle lock. Like if I was doing a normal ankle lock from Standard Ashy, I would want my hips to be like around your knee and like frankly almost as close to your hips as possible uh, within reason. With the shotgun ankle lock, I want my hips almost directly below my shoulder line. So what mm -hmm. I want to do with my feet is maintain, so if, if I get the actual grip, there we go, I'll come in a little bit closer with my hip and I'll try to generate pressure. You'll still probably feel it, like tap, tap. It, it's, yeah. it's unpleasant. Oh. What about now? <laughs> so the, Friday. yeah, Friday. exactly. The, 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 the line from my shoulder to my hips is going to be maintained in a couple of ways. One is with my posture. If I start shrugging too much to try to raise this, and this is why we went over this is excruciating detail, this stuff is because if I start with an overhook down by my hip and I have to raise it, I shrug in a way that will often round my spine in a way that makes it really difficult to actually uh, activate the braking mechanics. I want to stay fairly tall. I want to be like prominent, proud chest like this. And then I adjust the foot positioning as necessary to get my hips to line up underneath so that I can keep a fairly upright spine and rotate my core to activate this rather than shrugging and curling my spine in any way. Right? So the feet are maintaining distance. The feet are maintaining the distance aligned. to keep my hips aligned to allow me to stay fairly upright and rotate around the axis of my spine to create the braking pressure rather than a lot of curling or back extension type motions. It's more staying in place and rotating this way. I'm not saying there's not back extension. You are going to extend your back, but like once I get all this kind of set up and I get to here, I can start extending my back to that corner to help bend your foot in that direction. But I'm mostly trying to just take the foot out that way. I don't really care as much about your foot doing this. So what I do with my feet is we say it's adaptable because it literally just, as long as it allows me to create that distance with my hips while at the same time keeping pressure on your hips. And we talked about the three the things that we need to control when we want to achieve a good leg lock or have a chance at breaking somebody. We want to have immobilization or control of the hip. We want some kind of control of, you know, wedging mechanism at the knee and we want control of the end of the lever, right? We've got those three things. We can just do them in different ways. So the, so the, the standard foot positioning is what we talked about earlier where I'm like wrapping monkey feet around my shin. I can bring my foot to the outside of my partner's hip. Again, same thing, monkey feet, 
curling my heel, you know, making sure not to do something silly like that. As long as I'm hiding my heel, this creates really good immobilization of the hip. I can also just place my foot on my partner's other hip. Again, as long as I've got this and I, there we go, adjust my hip out, I'll get better pressure. Uh, I mean, frankly, you could even do that. Right? Anything that allows you to create this upright positioning and I'm losing your heel, let me get there. There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, yeah. And you're always going a butterfly hook on this side? The butterfly hook helps me so much with this adjustment mm -hmm. to get into the position that I'm pretty much always going to do it. Uh, I, Except for the Kyotera. Yes. Yeah, so the, 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 when I'm a, when I'm attacking like a standard, you know, a shock, when I'm attacking with this grip, I'm pretty much always going to try to put this in place. Uh, if I found myself in a like standard ashy configuration, uh, I may not be able to get the butterfly hook. In that case, I would try to do something like this. <laughs> And just be like, I'm trying to avoid uh, the, the boys, but you know, I might try to get that kind of thing and get my heel back. You can see like, as I get my hips back, I get the pressure. If my hips stay in, your foot is protected by the ground. I can't really get the pressure. As my hips come out and I stay at my elbow, as long as I've got some kind of framing that keeps your hips away and that allows me to push my hips underneath of your ankle, I can achieve the break. So you can organize your feet and any one of these uh, positions. And again, like we'll talk a little bit later on about how we can apply this uh, in a couple of different situations. One will be as a counter leg lock from within side somebody's 411. Another will be as a secondary uh, leg attack when I'm holding the 411, but those will be slightly different um, leg uh, positions. Again, using the, the mechanism while applying a Kyo ankle, slightly different leg position, but as long as you understand the mechanism, which is Keep distance between your your hips and your partner's hips, and get your hips underneath of the you know the line from your shoulder to your hip, the line from your partner's heel down. You'll be okay, and you'll be able to figure out a way to make it work.